So I hope that answers your question. And I think we have to get to the main topics of the coffee, you know, about the Nanyang coffee. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so coffee wise, um, coffee was something close to heart. This is my, this is my little family album. This is my wife when I first met her. So, so we were both working actually at Starbucks. Yeah. She, we were, I, I met her when we were like, what, 16? Yeah. Time flies, uh. Yeah, we are almost like 40 years gone. So my, when I was at Starbucks, that's when I, I first learned how to appreciate coffee. Um, I thought it was, that, that, that was one of the places in the early days of Starbucks where they were, they were very, it's all about people first, the, the barristers first. Um, it's never about making the perfect cup. It's about understanding your customers. The, the first thing that you do as a barrister is not to make coffee. It's actually to go out to clean up the tables. As you're cleaning up the tables, right, you, you look at the cup. You, you know what do customers like, what do they not like, right? But on top of that, right, that, that conversation when you're cleaning the table, when you're cleaning the glass uh, panels, when you're wiping, sweeping the floor, you, you have every single bit of opportunity to, to, to know the customer better and it becomes a friend. And in, in the relationship of that, um, they, even in the practice, even till they, they use the word partners, right? And when somebody comes in as a new customer, uh, they, they try to develop that relationship level to a partner. Uh, however, over the years, it's, it's commercialized and I think Howard Schultz left the relationship you can see a change it's no more as how it used to be yeah oh, oh no. we can't okay. Move on. <laughs> okay so this one this is my show he can he get okay, okay. hello sorry yeah. no 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 so sorry. How about the, the how about the Nanyang coffee? How do you get into that? Okay, so getting the Nanyang coffee, right? Um, was something that I always wanted to do since I was a kid. I always see my mom making coffee in the morning. Actually, it took me um when I was in Starbucks. I thought, hey, I can make an espresso. I can make a latte. This is easy. Um, it shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be a challenge at all. You know. I have all the fancy food machines, right? And then when you come back home, I see my mom making me a perfect cup of coffee so much so that um, I actually, my, 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 I come from a single parent family. So my dad left when I was very young. When he returned, the first thing he asked for was a cup of coffee for my mom. Yeah. Ah, it, he, it was 16 years, nearly 16 years. The first thing he wanted to drink was a cup of coffee. He cannot get the same cup of coffee out there. Now, I tried to use the salt to make coffee for, uh, for years, right? Never understood why, why I couldn't get the flavor, right? Okay. And, uh, thinking that, Hey, I know every single scientific reason about coffee and how can I make a perfect cup of Nanyang coffee? I couldn't do it. And, and the funny thing came, uh, when I started to understand culture, history, practice, and uh, apprenticeship with old coffee makers, huh? uh, as in your, in your kopi tiam. You know, you, you work with them, slowly you learn with them. You started to realize, right, that, that it was never about the recipe, it was never about the science. And you know, I did a lot of research in the coffee even. Uh, there's actually 305 possibilities to get your cup wrong. Yeah. Practically, when you put a Nanyang coffee method of making to it, it's a matrix that stack, stack up. It becomes by the thousand, right? So you know, next time when you see uncle pouring a cup of coffee like this in the kopi tiam or yakun anything, it's amazing that they can get you with a perfect cup of coffee every day. <laughs> yeah, that's why the toast was so important. And and then I start to realize that actually, right, there's a lot to, to do with understand your your senses when you are working on the cup of coffee. Um, your acoustic listening to the, the milk, the the, the the clanging of your Right? Temperature of the water, you feel it with your hands, 
as you're bringing it up, you can feel the steam as you see, you observe, you smell the aroma, right? Taste, right? All these things all combine into that one single moment to pour that cup of coffee for you. Um, Nanyang coffee is really, it's, it's very intricate. And, and it goes back to the roasting, understanding where the beans came from and how were they even sourced. Uh, different seasons, every quarter, right, it behaves differently. You have to move, it's like moving go goalposts that slides up and down. Uh, you cannot get, it's not one, uh, one method of making that fit so, right? If El Nino, different weather change, a volcano erupts maybe in one of the foundation areas nearby. It changes the whole taste and characteristics so of your beans once more. Uh, it becomes more acidic, yeah, and then you need to change the way you brew. Uh, and we, we have to be very sensitive about this. That's why you need to be always reading, observing the news. Uh, the ashes from the water also changes the flavor. The water pipes that, that we, we actually drink from every day, right? Um, con sometimes it contains different kind of minerals and rust, right? So without proper filtering also, those also affects the taste of coffee, yeah. So uh, in, 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 in short, I, I, this is from true accounts from uh, guys who are in the business, in coffee business for a very long, especially those in the coffee games. They will tell you on the west side, the coffee boiler runs faster than on the east side. Yeah, see, on, on Singapore. Yeah, so it, it, it's also to do with the, probably the piping and the water system also. So these are things that only when you're in the trade, you start to understand the laws are aware about it. Any, anybody else or anything you want to yeah. talk about, ask about, be personal or even work related, so no problem. Um, I have a question, Benjamin, yeah. about um, Gopi Tilo. Right. <laughs> Just a really quick one, because I always order my coffee in Singapore as Tilo, and I don't right. understand why they have to add a bit of hot water, you know, after they make the original black and they always put a bit of hot water on top to right. top it off. I have to order Dilok because I, I don't want them to do that. I want it like really... That's uh, the, 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 the Dilok itself. Yes. So why do they add that little bit of water at the end? Okay, so sometimes uh, in some brewers, you will notice your coffee sits on the warmer. So because when it's on the warmer, it's not hot, 100, it's not 100 degrees hot. Oh, okay. So when they, they take that water, if you look at the one that they're taking out, usually that is really boiling hot. They mm. use that sometimes to warm the cup also mm. that you're drinking from. Um, if you're trying this, if uh, you don't, if you, if you all don't believe me, right? you try this, you take a coffee cup next time at home, brew the cup separately, pour it into a cold cup. You realize that your coffee tastes bad. <laughs> Mm. Big time. Uh, it's not because of the brew, but it's because cognitively when you hold the cup, that connection is a disconnect. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's very amazing because the temperature dropped at least uh, about good 10, deg 10 degrees. Yeah. Um, I used to be at Thompson in the past when, uh, we, when in the early days we were serving the coffee. We used to warm the cups even. Uh, and then I realized that actually warming the cup was not enough. I had to warm the beakers and I warm every single equipment one, one more full round before I actually can serve the coffee out. Uh, because by the time I walk out to the customer, right, I actually lose about 5 degrees. And then that's when people start saying, the coffee is cold. Right. Yeah. So Tito actually, and so for some practice also, uh, I, I don't know if you're aware, but some coffee actually has a mixture of corn in there. So over time, it's on the warmer, it gets sour. So the idea of actually keeping the temperature up is to prevent you from tasting the acidity of the, the coffee yeah, uh, and the corn. So corn actually uh, is one of the factors. So when I was actually in the hospital, um, I learned that a lot of people, when they taste this, taste, taste, this flavor of the corn, and it's a bit uh, acidic on the taste bud, and it starts to linger at the throat here. So sometimes uh, old people will say, it's a very it's a very common uh, thing that people comment. It, it becomes uh, the reason why they add more sugar to their coffee to avoid the set. Right. 
not knowing that it's actually not 100% coffee you're drinking. Sometimes it's 50% only on the whole mixture or 70% of the whole mixture that's coffee only. Mm. Yeah, so you're drinking actually corn more water more, like that, which is uh, not, not the best combination actually. Mm. Benjamin, there is a question in the chat. Right. And I also have a question because you were talking about the siap part. So the siap part is actually not from the coffee, but from the corn? Yes. So it co the coffee uh, provides acidity, higher acidity as you, if you store it for too long, right, it oxidizes, uh, acidity goes up. And with heat also, because locally here in Singapore, it's very hot. So heat actually creates acidity. Then um, the, the corn itself, right, corn when it's roasted well, and um, just when it's being grounded, right, when you drink that cup, it's fine. But as the cup sits on the warmer, right, it extracts a lot more of uh, that, that acidity that, that boosts with the coffee and it creates that mix. And coffee is like a... Um, I, I, I tried this recipe before. It's like a little... It, 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 it creates like a MSG kind of feeling. Um, you add it to soup, you add it to food. It actually enhances the flavor a lot. Uh, in Mexico, it's very common to actually add coffee to everything. Uh, you had your paipu, uh, cafe paipu, right? You realize it's very tasty because it's like MSG actually. So um, it actually enhances your wood, the, 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 the back palate of your tongue if you are using it, right? But for corn, right, as we are taking, especially 3 one coffee also, if you all um, actually do three, drink, drink 3 one uh, I don't I strongly recommend not to. Because it, they, they actually add sodium also in your three month coffee to numb the front palate of your tongue. And that's mm. when you can't taste right? <laughs> the bitterness of the coffee. You start to taste only the, 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 the sweet because of the sugar. Then you assume that the coffee is good. Yeah. So um, if you take a closer look at some of the, the coffee in, in the market, um, take a look at the back of the nutrition facts. You will see that actually it's quite high amount of sodium content in there. Yeah, uh, which that, that's actually the things that actually add little by little. If you imagine you drink three, three cups a day, three packets of those before the creamer and everything, um, that's how you end up in a hospital sometimes. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking of that because as a police officer in the past, right, coffee is your water. Yeah, we, we, we I, I drink easily six, six cups a day on the go. That's just my basic normal. Uh, and, and it creates a lot of heart palpitations. Yeah, so and as I, I am doing now my own coffee, right, I realized that as I control my intake and as I manage what coffee I drink, um, I, I realized my, my heart condition improves a lot. My energy is coming back. Over the past three years, I can now climb up the hill without feeling tired. Yeah, in the past, I, when I walk a flight of stairs, easily halfway up the hill to follow you, yeah, I'll be half dead. Yeah, I have to take a little break before I can actually continue my journey up. So yeah, this these are I think all the little things that actually adds up to honest. Mm. 